Welcome to our latest video on the extraction of iron, the blast furnace process. This video is suitable for GCSE students. By the end of this video lesson, you should be able to explain how iron can be extracted from iron ore in a blast furnace. You should be able to identify that within the blast furnace we have combustion, reduction, decomposition and neutralization reactions and you should be able to write word and chemical equations to describe the reactions taking place. In our previous videos, we discussed the relationship between the reactivity of a metal and the ease at which it can be extracted from its source. And we learnt that metals at the bottom of the reactivity series are the easiest to extract because they are found as elements. Metals at the top of the reactivity series are the hardest to extract. They're found as compounds, and they're also found as the most stable compounds. So elements such as potassium, sodium, calcium, magnesium, aluminium, they have to be extracted using electricity by a process called electrolysis. Now it's these metals in the middle of the reactivity series that can be extracted by reduction using a reducing agent and we're going to focus on one of these metals iron in this video lesson the extraction of iron is one of the world's most important industrial processes iron is one of the most important metals and is used to make the alloy steel now steel is an alloy because it's a mixture of iron and other elements now we rely on steel to make cars, bridges, buildings, ovens, microwaves, washing machines, etc. Iron is made in a process called the blast furnace process and the raw materials that we need to make iron are iron ore, coke, limestone and hot air. Before we talk in detail about how this process works, let's discuss some of these raw materials. So if we start with the iron ore, so that obviously is our source of iron and the ore that they use to extract iron is called hematite and we've discussed that all previously. Coke is a form of carbon and this is used in the process as a fuel because we need a lot of heat in a blast furnace. You're talking about temperatures around 1500 degrees C. So burning coke, burning carbon releases a lot of heat and it's also used to make carbon monoxide which is the reducing agent in this process. Now you remember a reducing agent is a substance that causes another to lose oxygen. Look at the overall equation. We have iron oxide reacting with carbon monoxide to form iron and carbon dioxide. So the carbon monoxide is classed as a reducing agent because it causes the iron oxide to be reduced to lose oxygen to form iron. Now the other raw materials are limestone, which is used to remove impurities, and we'll discuss this later, and hot air. Now hot air is needed for the coke to burn, and remember the coke is a fuel that supplies the high temperatures needed for the blast furnace to work, and it also makes carbon monoxide when the coke burns. So that's what the hot air does. And the reason that we need hot air and not air is because high temperatures mean a faster reaction. And the furnace operates around about 1500 degrees C. So on this slide, we have some of the chemical reactions taking place in the blast furnace. So coke, carbon, burns in oxygen to form carbon dioxide. And when it does so, it releases heat energy. And obviously that's why we're able to get such high temperatures in the blast furnace. And coke is our fuel. Now this reaction is a combustion reaction because we burnt a fuel in a good supply of oxygen and we've generated heat energy. Now the carbon dioxide reacts with more carbon to form carbon monoxide. And it's the carbon monoxide that reacts with our iron oxide to form iron and carbon dioxide. Now we've written down both the chemical 
and word equations here. And if you are a student studying higher GCSE, you would be expected to write chemical equations to describe these reactions. You should also be able to spot reduction and oxidation taking place. So if we look at the first equation, you can see carbon is gaining oxygen when it forms carbon dioxide. It's being oxidized. Oxidation is a gain of oxygen. And once again, if we look at the overall equation, we see that iron oxide loses oxygen. It's reduced to form iron. What causes this reduction? The reducing agent, carbon monoxide. And the carbon monoxide gains oxygen to form carbon dioxide and the carbon monoxide is oxidized. Now in this video I've written the chemical equations for you. However, you would be expected to write chemical equations in the GCSE exam if you're a higher tier student. Therefore it's important you practice this skill. Now to help you we have made a series of videos on the YouTube channel to enable you to practice how to write chemical equations and how to write balanced chemical equations. Please look at these videos because this skill is a very important skill that you need to master. So now let's look at a diagram of a blast furnace. So in the top of the blast furnace, you put the raw materials, iron ore in the form of hematite, coke and limestone. And hot air is blasted into the furnace. Now, when the coke is in the furnace, it burns in the form of a combustion reaction and produces carbon dioxide. And when it reacts then with more carbon, it forms carbon monoxide. And it's the carbon monoxide that reacts with the iron oxide from the iron ore to produce iron and carbon dioxide. Now this is a continuous process. And what we mean by that is it operates 24 hours a day. We don't cool the furnace down. It's kept at 1500 degrees C. The coke, remember, is a fuel. It's producing lots and lots of heat. And we end up with liquid iron, molten iron, melted iron, and a material called slag. Now the slag forms because of impurities in the iron ore. Now remember, iron ore is iron oxide and then you have the rock. So you are going to get impurities and the slag is formed in this process and has to be removed from the iron. Now, the slag itself is a byproduct of this process. So it's a product that we can actually sell and we can actually um, make money from it. So it's economically important. Now the iron that is produced is in the liquid state. And when you look at your diagram, you can see that the molten iron is heavier than the slag. And therefore the slag is on top of the molten iron. So the slag would be removed and the molten iron would be removed. And the liquid iron then could be cooled down in various casts and um, you could form like slabs or strips of iron. So now let's focus on the role of limestone. So limestone is used to remove the impurities that exist in iron ore. And limestone is calcium carbonate and has a formula CaCO3. And as I mentioned, iron ore contains impurities of silicon dioxide and in a blast furnace, these are removed in a two-part stage. So the first thing that happens is in a blast furnace, calcium carbonate, limestone, breaks down because of the intense heat into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. And it's the calcium oxide that reacts with the sand impurities, the silicon dioxide impurities, to form the substance called slag, which can then be removed. Now, when calcium carbonate breaks down into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide, this is called a thermal decomposition reaction. And this is a type of reaction you would have studied previously. 
So this picture shows molten slag that has been removed from the blast furnace and it will cool down and solidify and then the slag can be sold to various companies because it's a product for road building, it's used as an aggregate in cement and concrete and it even has fertilizer properties and it could be used to act as a fertilizer for grassland. Now on the slide we have the word equations and the chemical equations to describe how this process works. So calcium carbonate breaks down into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide because of the intense heat in a blast furnace. Now this reaction is called thermal decomposition because you're breaking a compound down using heat. The calcium oxide then can react with the silicon dioxide the sand impurities and form calcium silicate which is commonly known as slag. Now calcium oxide is a metal oxide and metal oxides are bases. Now you remember that a base is the opposite of an acid. Silicon dioxide is a non-metal oxide and non-metal oxides are either acidic or neutral. Now silicon dioxide is acidic so if you react calcium oxide, a basic oxide, with silicon dioxide, an acidic oxide, the acid and base cancel each other out, and we have a neutralization reaction taking place. Now once again, I've included both the chemical equations and the word equations to describe the reactions taking place. Now you will be required to be able to write chemical equations and word equations for these reactions. Now this slide is a nice summary of all the chemical reactions that take place in the blast furnace and you can see that iron ore, coke and limestone are put into the top of the furnace. Now if you work in the blast furnace process they call this the charge and hot air is blasted into the furnace. You can see the temperature in the furnace gets as hot as 1500 degrees C Molten slag and iron ore are the products here and these are both in liquid state. The role of the limestone is shown clearly here. It breaks up into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide and the calcium oxide reacts with the sand impurities to form slag. And you can see also how the reducing agent carbon monoxide is also formed. go back to our original diagram in the blast furnace you can see that the molten iron and the slag are formed and the slag forms on top of the molten iron and these would both be removed the molten iron could be removed for further processing to make steel and the slag can be removed cooled down and then used as a byproduct and sold to companies um, as road building material or as an aggregate for concrete, or as I mentioned previously, sometimes slag can be used as a form of fertilizer. So this slide summarizes the different uses of slag, and also it reinforces the fact that the blast furnace process is a continuous process, with new raw materials added and products removed all the time due to the time and cost associated with getting the furnace up to a temperature of 1500 degrees C. Remember that iron oxide is reduced in the process as it loses oxygen and the carbon monoxide is oxidized as it gains oxygen. And the carbon monoxide is a reducing agent. Now I mentioned at the start of the video that iron is used to make steel and the iron you get from the blast furnace is impure. It contains around three to 4% carbon and some other non-metals and the impure iron is very brittle. It means that if you try and shape it, it sort of shatters. Now, most of the iron that's made in the blast furnace does get turned into the alloy steel. And remember, steel is a mixture of iron and other elements. And that's what an alloy is. It's a mixture of a metal and other elements. And in steel, usually there's over 98% iron content. And it will also have tiny amounts of carbon left in it in most steels and some other metals can be added to it as well. Now the amount of carbon and other elements in the steel dramatically affect the properties. 
Now this is a good thing and this is why steel is more useful than iron because we can vary the amount of carbon and we can vary the amount of other elements present in the steel and we can fine tune the properties to what we want and different customers for steel will require different properties. Having a high carbon content in steel can strengthen it and it gives the ability to harden it by heat treatment. However, it makes it less ductile and more brittle as a result. Although you're not required to know how to make steel in any great detail, I do think it's useful to know that the iron that you make in the blast furnace has around 3-4% to carbon in it and it's important to remove that carbon to get steel that is less brittle. And they do that simply by just um, blowing in oxygen and then the carbon gets removed because it burns to form carbon dioxide. And other metals are added to the steel to give it other properties. So you might add a bit of chromium and a bit of nickel because you might not want the steel to rust if you're making stainless steel. And that would be useful if you were making, say, cutlery because you would want steel that didn't rust when it came into contact with water. So that is essentially what they do when they make steel. So the following table shows what happens to the properties of steel when you alter the carbon content. So you can see that mild steel has only about 0.25% carbon and the result of that is it's not brittle and it can be shaped. Whereas if you had a high carbon steel, although it would be very hard, it would also be quite brittle as well, which means it would be difficult to shape. And you can see if you add elements such as chromium and nickel, you can end up with stainless steel and that's a lot tougher and it doesn't corrode, it doesn't rust and that would be useful for certain products. So now we're going to test your understanding of this video lesson with some practice questions. So here's the first practice question and this comes in two parts. So we'd like you to pause the video, have a go at this part of the question and then we'll then look at the second part of the question. Pause the video, have a go at the question. Now this is the second part of question one. Once again, pause the video, have a go at the question, and then we'll go through the answers to the whole question. See how you got on with question one. You asked to match the raw materials to its use. So iron ore is a source of iron, limestone removes impurities, and coke acts as a fuel. If you got all three correct, two marks, any one correct, one mark. Now let's look at the word equation. So you had carbon plus oxygen goes to carbon dioxide. One mark for that. So let's look at the second part of question one. You're asked to give the letter of the arrow which shows reduction taking place. It's arrow A. And this is because iron oxide loses oxygen. You get one mark for saying A and one mark for the idea that it's iron oxide losing oxygen. Or if you said there's a loss of oxygen taking place, that would get you the mark. Now part D is asking you to choose a term from the box which best describes an alloy. Well, that would be mixture because alloys are mixtures. They're mixtures of metals and other elements. So now have a go at question two. So read the question pause the video and have a go at it and this question is in three parts once you've done all three parts we'll go through the answers so here is the second part of question two pause the video and have a go at this question and here's the final part of question two once again pause the video and have a go at this last part of question two So now let's go through the answers to question two. So the reason that we add coke to the blast furnace is because it acts as a fuel, or you can say it makes the reducing agent carbon monoxide. And I think they would also accept if you said that it releases heat and we need a high temperature in the blast furnace, that would be fine as well. That gets you one mark for that. 
Now the reason that we need limestone is it removes impurities and you could say remove sand or it removes silica but this idea of removing impurities gets you a mark for that. And to balance the chemical equation we need to put a 3 in front of carbon monoxide CO so it's Fe2O3 plus 3 CO and we have 2 Fe, 2 iron and 3 carbon dioxide molecules and if you do this the equation is balanced. Now this equation is balanced because I have a total of two iron atoms on either side of the equation. I have a total of six oxygens on the left because I have O3 in Fe2O3 and 3CO. So that's six oxygens. And I have six oxygens now on the right because it's 3CO2. So three times two is six. And the carbons are also balanced because I have three carbons on the left and three on the right. Now given the chemical name of the substance which is reduced in the furnace, it is iron oxide, or you could say iron 3 oxide, because remember the iron in iron oxide is Fe3+, the more stable form of iron. So they will accept iron oxide or iron 3 oxide. So now let's go through the second part of question two. It's asking you to describe how the tensile strength changes as a percentage of carbon present increases. Well, you can see from the graph that it increases and then decreases. So that would get you a mark for saying that. But there's two marks for this question. So you need to use numerical data to get the two marks. So if you said that the tensile strength increases to a maximum with 0.8% carbon and then decreases, that would get you the second mark. Or Alternatively, you could say that it increases to a tensile strength of 800 MPa and then decreases. Both would be fine for the second mark. Now for the final part of question two, you were asked to use the graph and the table to name the alloy which has the lowest tensile strength. Now you remember that tensile strength increases up to a maximum when you get to 0.8% carbon and then it decreases after that. So the alloy which has the lowest tensile strength will be cast iron because that's got 3.6% carbon and if you go to your graph you will see that 3.6% carbon has a tensile strength of just over 200 MPa which is the lowest of those alloys listed in the table. So here's the final question we would like you to have a go at. So pause the video, read through the question, have a go at it, and then we'll go through the answers. So in question three, you're asked to use the table to answer the questions. So two effects of increasing the percentage of carbon in steel. You increase the hardness when you increase the percentage of carbon and you make it more brittle. So one mark for if you said it gets harder or increases hardness and the second mark if you said it becomes more brittle. So for part two, you had to choose which type of steel you would use to make car bodies and hip replacement joints. So you would use mild steel for car bodies because it's important that you can shape them and that's the form of steel that's easy to shape. So that's why you use mild steel and the reason it's easily shaped. And for hip replacement joints, you would use stainless steel because it's tough and doesn't corrode, it doesn't rust. So that concludes our video lesson and all that's left is for us to recap the lesson objectives. So you should now be able to explain how iron can be extracted from iron ore in a blast furnace. You should be able to identify that within the blast furnace we have combustion, reduction, decomposition and neutralization reactions and you should be able to write word and chemical equations to describe the reactions taking place. So that concludes our video. Please check out our YouTube channel, Dr. O Chemistry, and our Twitter site, which contains lots of chemistry information and links, at Radar Chemistry.